Before we get into this video, I just wanted to take a quick second to promote the official Inspirasper Discord server. If this video confuses you in any way and leaves you with any unanswered questions, feel free to click the link in the description below where you can join a welcoming community that can answer any of your questions in live time. Feel free to swing by, hang out, chat with some really cool people. I try and get on maybe once a week or so, but there are plenty of more people who are more active than that. That being said, let's get into it and learn how to make music in Ableton Live Light. The goal of this video is to teach you all about Ableton Live Light. What is it, why you should use it, and most importantly, how to use it. I've made some timestamps of some important parts in this video, feel free to click around at your leisure. But before we learn how to use Ableton, I think it's important to learn what it is. Odds are you probably got a hold of Ableton Light by purchasing some sort of music hardware, say for example a keyboard or a launch pad. Now Ableton comes in four different versions. We have Suite, Standard, Intro, and light. I'm focusing on the latter for this video. I would highly recommend you take some time on your own to research the differences between the different versions of Ableton. You can learn more by going to Ableton's website where you can compare the different versions so you can make your own call. This video, we're focusing on Ableton Lite. You see here before me on my screen, I have Ableton Live 10 Lite downloaded. If you open up Ableton Lite, you should see a screen that looks like this. Now, I know this interface can be a little bit intimidating at first if you're new to this, but the goal of this video is to break it down so you get more acquainted with the feel of the software. So before we get into making any music, I would just like to take a little bit of time walking through the interface of this software. I'm not going to go through every button in Ableton, that would just take too much time. However, I am going to point out what I think are the more important ones, things that you should get familiar with. Let's start in this top left corner of Ableton. In general, these series of buttons in the top left corner adjust the tempo of your song. Notably, you have this button that initially says 120. This is your BPM, or beats per minute. In general, the lower this number is, the slower your song is. The higher the number, the faster. If you're ever confused by what a button does, feel free to click on it and look in the bottom left corner of Ableton. This is your info view. This little panel right here gives you a short description on what it is you're selecting, so hopefully you can learn more about it. For example, this button that says 120, this is my project tempo. As I read into this, it teaches me that I can drag it up or down to adjust the value, or click and type in a number. So if I wanted this BPM to be, let's say, 128, I can left click on this button, type in the numbers 128, and hit enter. My BPM is now just a little bit faster. Or alternatively, I can left click and drag either up or down on this button to adjust the number in a different way. Let's say I actually wanted my BPM to be 97. Okay, great. You'll find this is the case for most buttons in Ableton, that you can either type them in manually, or you can left click and drag up and down to adjust the value. This is my time signature. For those of you out there who have some music theory knowledge and want to adjust your time signature, feel free to do so here. If you're not too familiar with music, music theory, I would recommend leaving it at 4-4. This button right here with a white and black dot is my metronome. By default, it's grayed out, so that means my metronome is turned off. If I were to left click on this, it turns yellow. It now means my metronome is enabled. I can verify this by going over here to the top middle of Ableton where there are these series of three buttons. This is for play, stop, and record. If I were to click this play button, and then this stop button whenever I'm done. Sure enough, my metronome was ticking along at 97 beats per minute and in a time signature of 4-4. Alternatively, if you get tired of clicking the play button and stop button, you can press the space bar to either toggle playing on or pausing. If you have good rhythm, you can set your BPM by tapping along to a certain pace. Maybe you're listening to a song and you feel really inspired by that BPM. You can listen to it and then tap along and however fast you tap, Ableton will automatically calculate your BPM. The more taps you give it, the more accurate your BPM will be as it tries to calculate the rate you're tapping. For now, I want to keep my Ableton session at 128 beats per minute. This circular button is your recording button. If any tracks are armed for recording, which I'll get into in a little bit, you can press this button and then Ableton will begin listening to any input that you have set up, at which point you can begin recording, maybe say a live instrument or potentially your voice. On the left side of Ableton, we have our library. This will provide us with a series of sounds and instruments that we can drag into Ableton to use to make music. 
music. In here you'll find things such as, but not necessarily limited to, samples, so these are any of your audio files, instruments, these are virtual sounds you can drag onto a MIDI file that can play notes, audio effects, which you can add onto any layer or track to manipulate the sounds of that layer, third-party plugins, anything you've downloaded and installed that wasn't initially part of Ableton, and more. Generally, anything that you need to drag into Ableton, if it's not a file from your computer, will be found here in this library. And finally for now, the last thing I'll cover before we actually learn how to make music is this main window right here. This is either your session view or your arrangement view. You can toggle between the two by going up here in this top right corner and clicking one of these two buttons. Whichever one is yellow is the one that's currently selected. In this case, this is my session view. If I were to click this button, I am now in my arrangement view. Alternatively, you can press the tab key on your keyboard to swap between these two. Now, session view, which you see right here before you, is perfect for live performances. Maybe you're having a jam session and you want to loop some sounds. Maybe you have a loop pedal. You're just kind of grooving out, making some music. What this allows you to do is loop sound effects or MIDI clips, where you can then continuously repeat them and add more layers on top of that. Each of these columns represents a layer in Ableton. By default, you start off with two MIDI tracks and two audio tracks. This doesn't really mean much since you can delete them at any time by clicking their column header and selecting delete, or by adding them back by right clicking over here and selecting either insert audio track or insert MIDI track. Unfortunately, in Ableton Lite, you are limited to a maximum number of eight MIDI and audio tracks combined. The different paid versions of Ableton provide you with more tracks in addition to plenty of other things, but in Lite, yes, you are limited to a total of eight. Within each column, you'll notice there are a series of boxes. This is where you can add in either a MIDI clip underneath your MIDI tracks. You can do so by double clicking clicking within one of the boxes, or by adding in a sound effect under your audio tracks. You can do so by going to your Ableton library, finding a sound effect that you like, and dragging it onto one of these boxes. You can double click on any MIDI clip to open up your piano roll, at which point you can drag it upwards by hovering over this horizontal bar. Within here, you can draw in notes, and then whatever instrument you assign to your MIDI track will then play those notes. If I wanted to draw in notes, I can either press this pencil button up here in the top right corner, and then left click anywhere in my MIDI clip. If I click this button again, I will go back to my cursor mode, where I can then select certain notes and either move them around by left clicking and dragging, or maybe just by deleting them by pressing the delete key. A shortcut for this button is the B button on your keyboard. So over here on the left, the vertical part of this piano roll is the piano. These are the pitches of your notes. So for example, if I were to draw in this note right here, this is a G. And the horizontal component of my piano roll is the time. So if I wanted to change the length of one of my notes, I can hover over either the left or right side of my note left click and drag. Now by default, this will snap to whatever grid I have set. I can change the length of this grid by either right clicking and selecting fixed grid and then choosing my length. So for right now, I am in 1 16th of a bar. If I wanted to change that to say 1 32nd, I now have a more precise grid so I can snap this note to one of these lines. Or I can select it as something longer, maybe a, say a half a bar. And so now my next closest snap is all the way right here. You can copy and paste notes by highlighting them and pressing whatever the shortcuts are on your computer, which will duplicate the notes that you have selected wherever this vertical line is. You can move this line by left clicking anywhere. So if I wanted to paste my notes, say right here, boom, just press the paste shortcut on my computer and I have copied these notes. Now this mini clip is made and it has notes and that's great and all, but if I were to hit play, nothing happens. There's actually two reasons for this. One being in session view, MIDI clips don't automatically play. Ableton doesn't know which of these scenes you're trying to play. Scenes are an instance of a sound that you can play whenever you're looping. You can make it so that these automatically come in and in theory, lock to a certain grid. So if you're performing a live set, maybe again, you're jamming out. If you have some sort of hardware, maybe a button that you can press on a keyboard or a launch pad, you can then toggle each instance of a scene under each of your MIDI tracks or audio tracks. And again, unfortunately in light, you are limited to a total of eight scenes. I'll demo more of what I mean in a little bit, but let's figure out why we can't hear any of our sounds. Our notes aren't playing. The reason for this is because we haven't assigned it to an instrument. Ableton doesn't know what sounds to play for each of these notes. You can fix this by going into your library under instruments and looking through this catalog of provided instruments in Ableton Lite. These are just a series of folders where you can look 
and maybe say, ooh, I want a guitar sound. What you can then do is you can drag any of these onto your MIDI track. It's worth noting you don't actually have to go under these folders. You can actually use the root file right here as your instrument. Think of these as different categories of synths. And then within them, Ableton has provided a series of different presets using that synth. You can navigate through these sounds by left clicking on them and navigate using your arrow keys until you find something that you like. So I actually kind of like this Guitar Palm Legacy, so I want to make some music with this. So what I can do is I can left click and drag this and let go on top of my MIDI track. So now this MIDI layer is assigned to that instrument. You can see down here in the bottom, if I click on my MIDI track, I can see this Guitar Palm Legacy. If I were to tweak these knobs to my liking, they'll actually change the sound. But now if I were to hit play in my Ableton session, Again, still nothing, and that's because it still doesn't know which scene to play. One way to hear sounds that you have made in this session view is you can go over and hit the play button next to your MIDI clip. So one thing you noticed is I actually only drew in four notes, but it just kept repeating. And that's the beauty of the session mode, is it just repeats whatever you have laid out on top of here. If I didn't want it to loop, I could double click within my MIDI clip and deselect this loop button. So now if I hit play on my MIDI clip, it no longer loops. Let's turn that back on for now. One thing to note when you hit play is you should notice that there's a green bar down here that moves as the sound is playing. This is the volume indicator of my sound. The left half represents the left side of your sound, and same for the right side represents the right. Think of having two different earphones, and this sound is in stereo. You can actually adjust whether the sound is going left or right by moving this knob. If I were to hit play, left click and drag on this knob, you should hear how the stereo changes. If you're not listening with headphones, that may have been hard to hear, but trust me that the sound was moving, panning from the left to the right as I adjusted this knob. If I wanted to adjust the overall volume of this track, also known as the gain, I can do so by moving this arrow. By default, it starts off at zero, and if I were to move this knob downwards, I'm lowering the sound. These numbers represent the decibels below my original value. Let's copy this MIDI clip by left clicking and either selecting copy or using the copy shortcut on your computer and pasting it within this second MIDI track. Let's assign it a different instrument. This sounds good, let's drag it onto here and then let's also press play on this MIDI clip. I didn't really hear much of a change. And you know what's happening is both of these tracks are playing at the same time. You should notice that the triangles to the left of these mini clips are both green, which means whenever I hit play, both of these clips are playing. If I look down here below my second mini clip, near my volume indicator, I should see this number that says negative 15.9. Compared to my other mini clip that says negative 1.33, this is the highest the volume reached the last time you played this track. And this negative 15 tells me that this MIDI clip actually doesn't get very loud. So one thing I can do to hear this change of my second MIDI track is to either lower the volume of my first, or alternatively, I can press this button right here. This S button means I'm soloing this track. Now if I were to hit play, no matter what, this will be the only track I will hear. I can stop soloing at any time by clicking this blue button again. It's also worth noting that these yellow buttons within this MIDI clip represent whether the track is active or not. Yellow means this track is on, it will be playing. If I turn it off and it's gray, that means this track is off. You will not hear any sound. Lastly, I'd like to point out this button below the S. This is my recording arm. This tells Ableton, hey, this track is ready for recording. So in order to record any sound, as I mentioned earlier, by clicking this record button, I need to have a track armed for recording. Otherwise, Ableton won't know which of your layers it's trying to record. And it's telling Ableton, hey, this hard picked guitar instrument, this is ready to receive recording input. I would then need to set up where I receive my input from. Maybe I'm gonna receive my MIDI input from my computer keyboard, for example. Or maybe I don't even care about what form of MIDI I'm receiving. If it receives any MIDI input whatsoever, then just record it. If I were to go up here on the top right corner of Ableton and click this keyboard button, this allows me to use my computer keyboard as a keyboard, as in the music sense, so I can now play it like a piano. 
You should notice after I armed a track for recording, these buttons that used to be square are now circles. This means if I click this button, this particular scene is where I'll record my MIDI input, and I'll make this as my MIDI clip. So now if I solo this layer and if I play back my MIDI clip, I should hear my recorded input. At which point you can adjust the MIDI notes to your liking. Maybe you want them to be more precise. You can highlight your notes, right click, and select quantize. This will snap them to the closest grid. You can change the size of the grid they snap to by going to quantize settings. Say, hey, either quantize to this current grid or something of my choosing. You don't have to do this, just pointing out that it is an option. In Ableton Live Sessions, you can only have one scene playing from a particular layer. So in this case, in my hard-picked guitar layer, I have the MIDI clip that I initially copied over, and then I also have my recorded input. I'm gonna play this MIDI clip and then switch to my second one. So what you noticed is my hard-picked guitar switched from this initial MIDI clip, which I know is hard to hear since this other one is kind of overpowering it, it switched from here to my other MIDI clip, the one that I had recorded. And you should have noticed that it actually snapped to the proper grid for the tempo of my song. It didn't just go immediately the second I hit play. The number on the left represents how many times your MIDI clip has been triggered. The pie graph represents how much longer this MIDI clip has until it's finished, and the number on the right shows how long this MIDI clip is. You can see that by this recorded layer, it's fairly long. It's only been triggered once, and it has this much longer until it's over. Whereas this MIDI clip over here got triggered four times since it's only four bars long. You can spice up your sounds by adding audio effects to any layer in Ableton. You can do so by going into your library and going under audio effects. These are all the audio effects that are available in Ableton Lite. The best way to learn what these do, honestly, is just to add them onto a layer and just kind of play around with them and hear how they affect your sound. For example, if I wanted a reverb on this guitar, I can left click and drag reverb and drag it onto my MIDI track. Now let's hear what this reverb sounds like on only this guitar layer. In any audio effect, you can adjust the settings to your liking by tweaking these knobs. Say for example, I have an EQ3. I can drag this also down here onto my MIDI track. It's worth noting that audio effects process from left to right. So in this case, this reverb will affect my sound. In this case, it makes, uh, it, makes it a little bit wet, kind of sounds like we're in a cave. And then my EQ will affect my sound, which I'll get into in just a second. Whereas if I move this all the way over to the left, as you can see right here, now my EQ takes place, it manipulates the sound, and then the reverb is applied to the remainder. And EQ manipulates the frequencies of your sound. So if I wanted to cut off the low ends. Say, for example, I don't want any really low frequencies. I can do so by manipulating these knobs. I think teaching you how to use each of these audio effects is just a little bit out of the scope of this video. I don't know if I have time for that, but tweak around with your sounds until you get something that you like. If you wanted to add in, say, maybe a drum loop, for example, you can add a MIDI track. You can go under your library under drums, and select drum rack. Add that in to your MIDI track. If you look down here in the bottom left, this creates a grid where each of these little sections of the grid, you can assign a sample, a sound effect. If I were to expand this drum hits section of my drums library, I can see different sound effects. Maybe say for example, a kick sound effect. Find something that I like. And whatever sound I like, I can left click and drag into this grid. Maybe I want to find a snare. So now I can make a MIDI clip as I normally do, and I can actually trigger these sound effects in my piano roll, so I can draw out a pattern of my kicks. Let's solo this drum layer so I can hear what I'm working with. I can change the length of my MIDI clip by going over here underneath this loop button we messed with earlier. I can change the length. This is in bars. So maybe I want it to be four times as long. Just kidding, let's set it to be too long. So now let's unsolo that and see how my drums compare with the rest of my song. Now, I kind of drew these notes in willy-nilly, I wasn't really taking it super seriously, so maybe let's make this sound a little bit nicer. So 
I think you can start to get a feel for how you can turn this into making music, right? From now on, it's just as easy as adding in the different layers that you want. Maybe a bass layer, maybe some chords. Add in different instruments like a piano, some vocals. For each scene you make, you can then trigger different clips or sound effects to kind of switch up your sound. So I think that kind of covers the session view, at least the basics. You get the point. Let's actually move on to what I tend to use Ableton more so for, the arrangement view. Remember, you can toggle the arrangement view by pressing the tab key on your keyboard. Now, arrangement view is used to lay out your songs. This tends to be used more so from a production standpoint standpoint. If you actually want to create a full three, four minute long, whatever, what have you, song, you can lay out your layers horizontally, you can arrange them, and then stack them on top of each other vertically if you so choose. As an example, let's add in a MIDI track. I can draw in a MIDI clip in my MIDI track for however long I want it to be. Let's say I want it to be four bars long, at which point I can right click and select insert MIDI clips. Since we're now acquainted with this and familiar with what this means, we can kind of move through this a little bit faster. Let's add an instrument onto our sound. Let's say I wanted a pad, for example. I, I found this muted one noise orchestral pad under analog pad, boom. I don't know, that's just something that I wanna make. I can draw in my MIDI clip like I always had. Let's say maybe I wanted to make a chord for my pad. I can just draw in my notes like I had done before. One thing you'll notice when you press play is in fact my session layers are still going on at the same time as my arrangement view. This can make for some really interesting musical combinations. Let's say you have an arrangement laid out that you already know that you like, but maybe it's missing one layer, one little synth that you don't quite have right. You can play your arrangement view and then on top of that, mess around with your live session. For now, I'm just gonna solo my pad. You may have noticed I drew in a scale over here on the left. This doesn't just show up by clicking some button. I manually drew these notes in and moved them over here. This is just a little trick I like to do for keeping in the same scale, just since I know some of you might ask about that. So for example, say if I wanted to make a layer of pads, what I did here is I drew in my MIDI clip like I had done before. I drew in my notes and I assigned it an instrument that I liked. In this case, I chose a preset called sadness pad under analog pads. What you can then do in arrangement view as opposed to session view is actually Actually stack these layers together. So if I were to add in another MIDI track, I can then, let's say, I don't know, copy over this MIDI clip. And maybe I'm looking to have some sort of bass layer. One potential thing you could choose to do is maybe delete all the notes except for, for the very bottom notes, the roots of your chord. Then maybe you can drag onto here a different instrument that you like. you can continue to stack layers as much as you'd like. Again, just keep in mind you do have that 8 track limit. At this point, you can choose to stack your layers. Maybe you want to duplicate some layers, for example, this layer of chords. You can move your MIDI clips around so that they trigger at different times. Maybe you can shorten the length of the MIDI clips. You're also allowed to draw in more than one MIDI clip on a particular MIDI track. And then you can lay your song out horizontally like this. And this is, in theory, how you would then create a full length track. If you're happy with what you have, you can go up to File export audio, and this will allow you to manage the settings to export your final track. This will play what is in your Ableton session and turn it into an actual audio file that you can then send out and put it into the world, do whatever you will with it. Certain settings you may be interested in are how long your track is. For example, in this case, this is only going to render eight bars worth, so this entire length of this MIDI track. If I wanted to maybe say encompass the second MIDI track, I'd have to turn this up to 16. That ends right here. You have things such as your sample rate. 
honestly, if you don't know much about it, just leave the default settings. It might be for the best, but at which point you can click this export button and it will export your song. And that should do it. That's pretty much it. That's just the very basics of how to make music in Ableton Lite, or at the very least, how to navigate the interface a little bit better. Hopefully that taught you something. Hopefully you got something from this again. If you'd like to, you can join my Discord server by clicking the link in the description below, where you can feel free to ask questions if you have any. There's an active community there. I would love to answer your questions. They're super knowledgeable. I try and get on as much as I can, so I can personally interact with you one-on-one. -on -one. And overall, it's just a really good time. I appreciate you watching. Hope you learned a lot. I'll see you in the next one.